Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the water flow trial, the fluids management in acute pancreatitis. So trying to remember that acute pancreatitis is an inflammatory condition of the pancreas, most commonly caused by gallstones and alcohol use. It presents with typical manifestations such as sudden severe pigastric pain, radiating to the back, nausea, vomiting in the majority of cases, but also epigastric tenderness on palpation. Something that is important, this study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and the background is supported by the fact that uh, when patients arrive acutely with signs of pancreatitis, they're typically managed with aggressive hydration. So, because the initial management is primarily supportive and includes a fluid resuscitation, we have to get more evidence for this practice. And... Um, we also give them analgesics, um, analgesics and anti-emetics or enteral nutrition if needed. So, but it is important to point out that there are many studies that talk about acute pancreatitis management. However, few randomized control trials are evaluating the effects of the type of fluid, but especially the rate of infusion or the total volume infused for acute pancreatitis and even the, the initial bolus if there's needed a bolus. Um, there's evidence that support that aggressive early resuscitation leads to poor clinical outcomes. And actually, many uh, international societies, like the American Gastroenterological Association, recommends the aggressive fluid resuscitation. And we're going to talk about it here. So what is needed, it's an, a study that answers the question, how much is too much or how much is too little? Um, so early aggressive hydration is widely recommended and we have to get some, some, some answers because the, the, the evidence for the practice is very limited and poor. So the clinical question that they asked in this study was, does the use of moderate fluid resuscitation in acute pancreatitis decrease the rate of progression to moderate to severe pancreatitis compared to the aggressive resuscitation? And we're going to see that. So the population that was studied were adults patients uh, older than eight, 18 years old of age that um, qualify with the Atlanta acute pancreatitis uh, revised criteria having two out of three criteria. And the first one was the classic abdominal pain, pain. And when we talk about the classic abdominal pain, we're referring to a pain that is constant, that is very severe in the epigastric area, classical radiating towards the back that is worse after meals and it worsens when, with the cubitus supine. It improves when the patient leans forward. So this is the type of classic abdominal pain. But also we have a very specific enzyme like the lipase that if it's greater than three times the upper normal limit or also the amylase, it's a it's a, one of the criteria for the Atlanta criteria. Um, classification. Um, so signs of acute pancreatitis on imaging with presentations less than 24 hours to be qualified as an acute pancreatitis. And we typically, um, with ultrasound, uh, it's actually the first line imaging modality for all patients. And we have some supported findings like enlarged hypochoic pancreas, uh, talking about a pancreatic edema. But also we can see peripancreatic fluid in ascites and some features that suggest that the etiology may be from a bilary, um, bilary source, like, col uh, like cholelithiasis, gallbladder slotch, or dilated biliary tree, bilary tree. So we, we can see that, and we can also check many complications, but the, uh, like the CT is only indicated in, in patients that um, we don't have a diagnostic certainty. We're not sure about it because maybe the enzymes are not as high as here we talk about. Or maybe there is a severe pancreatitis or the lack of improvement after seven, weeks, seven days or an acute deterioration. Or sometimes when you just want to uh, evaluate the, the underlying um, cause um, because the other study are negative. And findings typically for this that we talk here, signs of acute pancreatitis on imagings are like enlargement of the pancreatic parenchyma with edema or in distinct pancreatic margins with surrounding fat stranding. And just like the, like the ultrasound, we can also see pre-pancreatic free fluid. So 
uh, here, um, the study, of some of the characteristics of the patient, the demographics are the age, the medium age is um, 56 in aggressive fluid group, and in the moderate group is 57, so there's not much difference. Um, and female sex is a little bit more uh, common in the aggressive fluid uh, group. However, something that is important for the result of this study is to know that hypovolemia doesn't change much. It's not very different from one another. Aggressive group is 52.5% and 51.2% in the moderate fluid resuscitation group. So that's important to get as a baseline. The methods of this study, it, uh, the design is a multi-center, multinational, open-label, randomized control trial. And the control group that some that what we do right now, like up to, like up today, currently we do just aggressive fluid resuscitation, consisting of a bolus of twenty milliliters per kilo of body weight, followed by three milliliters per kilo per hour. That's what we usually do now. However, the intervention group for this study is moderate resuscitation. We just give half of what we do in control group. So a bolus of ten if the patient has hypovolemia. And if not, we don't give anything. And we're going to check that in the next table. But the methods, um, the patients are evaluated every 12 hours, 12, 24, and then 40, and then 20, 72 hours, just to check that the patient is not achieving, it's not getting to a, um, it's not getting to a safety endpoint. So the development of moderately severe or severe pancreatitis during hospitalization is a primary outcome. That's what we're going to check. Uh, and the plan, uh, the sample size was 744 patients. But there was an interim analysis that stopped the study at 248 patients because they were developing many side effects from the aggressive, aggressive group. And it was quite evident. So the primary safety inputs were criterion one, non-invasive evidence of heart failure, like an echo. We give an echo and the patient is developing a heart failure. Um, Radi radiographic evidence of um, pulmonary congestion or also a cardiac cath ejection heart failure. The second criterion is the dyspnea, the development of respiratory uh, difficulty. And criterion three, signs of heart failure like uh, the rails, the GVD, um, hepatological reflex more specific, or peripheral edema just uh, in the lower limbs or something like that. So. The secondary safety aim points are organ failure or multiple organ failure, respiratory failure, local complications, organ um, also that is persistent like kidney failure. The hospital length of stay and the ICU admission and length of stay are also secondary end points. So this is the summary of the study that we're gonna talk about right now, really fast here so you can get the idea. First, we randomize the patient and we have the aggressive fluid resuscitation group. We give a volus of 20 ml per kilo every time we admit a patient with pancreatitis. And then an infusion that maintains at three ml per kilo per, per hour. And at three hours of, uh, of the therapy, we're gonna check if the patient is developing a fluid overload to decrease or stop the infusion early. At 12, 24, 48, and 72 hours, we're gonna start with the goal direct therapy checkpoints, which are important because we need to know if the patient, one, is being hypovolemic, it's not enough, it's uvolemia, we are achieving it, and three, if we're giving too much, is there suspicion for fluid overload or not? So hypovolemia, which we already talked about it, 20 ml per kilo, and an infusion of three. If the patient is developing, one, oliguria, less than 0.5 ml per kilo per hour of urine output, or systolic BP of less than 90, then we can also give some bolus of 20 again. If there's uvolemia, normal bulimia, we just give half of it, 1.5. And we, we stop the infusion 48 hours after giving it if the patient is already tolerating PO. Um, suspicion of fluid overload, we, we have to stop it. Sometimes uh, some physicians uh, try to decrease it gradually and it's allowed and it's actually recommended. And just like uh, the, normal, uh, the normal volemia group, if the patients are tolerating the uh, oral feeding, for at least eight hours, we can already stop the infusion. In the moderate, so here, the innervation group, here, right here, I switched colors, I'm sorry. So we start giving 1.5 ml per kilo and then a bolus of 10, only in patients that have hypovolemia. If the patient's normal bulimic, 
we don't give any bolus. We just give an infusion of 0.5 ml per kilo per hour. So uh, if the one, if the patient hypovolemic, we give 10 bolus and 0.5, 1.5. And we just give the same 10 milliliters per kilo if the patient has oliguria or BP less than 90. A systolic BP than 90, less than 90. So normal bulimia, we're doing good. We just give the infusion and suspicion of fluid overload the same. We stop it or decrease it. These are the primary outcomes. Uh, the important ones are uh, the primary outcome. Was it a shift or not? 22% of the patients in the aggressive group in the control and intervention group, 17.3%, which is a different from 4.8%. It's not statistically significant. So this one really uh, is lacking a little bit in, in power, statistical power in terms of uh, a primary outcome. Severe pancreatitis development, 6.6 .6 versus 1.6. So mother group is better here. Uh, local complications the same. Moderate fluid has less complications than the aggressive fluid resuscitation group. I'm gonna check that here in the table. Let me check right here, it's way better. First, moderately severe or severe acute pancreatitis during hospitalization. There's not like a very substantial difference between the two groups. So this one is the one that is lacking a little bit. It's not enough. So number two, fluid overload. This one, there is an abrupt, there's a very powerful, very significant difference in the moderate group versus aggressive. Um, so this one is better the moderate suspension because it, give, it gives us less chances of overflowing the patient, of overloading the patient with fluid. Um, any organ failure, you can see the difference. There is a favor in the intervention group as well as the any local complications. This is way better here. So safety, uh, uh, this is a safety out, uh, outcome. So we can see the fluid overload 20.5 versus 6.3. Moderate to severe fluid overload. This is a substantial evidence. 4.1% uh, more chances of getting the patient uh, with pulmonary edema, with uh, peripheral edema, with um, ascites and any other uh, length of stay that is gonna be way longer. Symptoms of fluid overload like dyspnea were more common in the aggressive group as well as peripheral edema, pulmonary rails, um, any other physical findings of, of fluid overload. But also on hemodynamic, um, obviously, testing. So conclusions of this study. The trial suggests that the aggressive fluid administration results in an increased likelihood of fluid overload. And this is important. We don't want the patients to be complicated by a side effect. We already know that this is a potential result of giving fluid. However, we have to give a therapy that decreases the chances of getting the patient with fluid overload. It is important to highlight that although it's not a statistically um, significant with 4.8% of the percentage of difference, the primary outcome is not, in it, it's not statistically, it's statistically powerful, as well as many of the important secondary outcomes also favor the intervention group. This is the important less side effects. So this study is a high quality and will encourage more studies and more essays to be developed, um, emphasizing other parts of the treatment. But the recommendation at the end is, when you have a patient with acute pancreatitis, you administer lower volume boluses, like 10 ml per kilo, only in patients that are having hypovolemia. If the patient is not, it's eubolemic, it's normal volemic, you don't give a bolus. And the maintenance fluids, the infusion, should be set at 1.5 milliliters per kilo per hour to decrease the chances of getting the patient overloaded. So thank you for checking. Any questions, uh, give them in the comments.